Hi guys, I'm Brett from Hearns Hobbies. I'm Tony from Hearns Hobbies. In fact you are, and today we are going to take a look at and unbook and unbox. <laughs> or unbook. Unbook as well, at Tamir's Super Sabre. What can you tell me about oh, this, this Tamir Super Sabre? Not a whole lot, but it is it is one from my era, from when I, not long after I first started. So this is, a, I believe it's the last incarnation of the Hotshot Bloodlines. So this was released, first released in 1987. 87, yep. And this is in fact the first time Tamir have ever re-released it. And it's a cool body. It's, cool thing. So it's, it's got CVA shocks. Um, it's got the accessible radio tray for doing your receive uh, your crystal changes. Um, it's got the new shock tower in the rear. Let's take the lid off and have a look in there. Let's Tony. see what we've got here. What have we got? Look straight Performance away. Performance four-wheel drive off-road racer. There we go. And it's already oh, painted. Oh, look at that! Which takes all the fun out of it for me. It does, doesn't it? But for a lot of people, I don't know. They go for box art anyway. Yeah. You and, know. And, and if you're going to go box art, why not? And they don't want the hassle of having to paint the thing. And yeah. I, I get that. And, of course, when you get a pre-painted one from Tamiya, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. It's not know. like there's any. I don't, I don't know how they do it. Mama son's been doing a few bodies in her time, hasn't she? Yeah. Hey? It's, just, it's just a... It's so good. A PS12, you reckon? Just yeah. A bit of the... And here we have the radio tray cover. A bit clear hut. And I like that it's used the original parts mould. Yes. Or they've recreated it, one of the Recreating two. It. 1987. It says 2008 to me. It does, doesn't it? 1987 2 Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Isn't it? That looks, I suspect they've reconstituted it. Reconstituted somewhere. it. What have we got under there? You got not much. Oh, some suspension arms lurking around in the bottom of the box. Yep. Let's have a look here. So these are and should be very familiar with all the hot, hot shot, shot things. Wow, that's what, he looks that's what Master. Slightly updated to me. That's what Master BJ said. But anyway. And there you go. Right. You, you've got a classic hot shot wheel. Classic. With the um, the wheel adapter with the three points. The three dungers. Yeah. The three dungers on there. They were they were so cool. Same size front and rear. No, a little bit narrower. A little bit narrower. The front. Fantastic. I'm going to get this box out of the way. Yep. We're going to go box diving. Is that like dumpster diving? Like dumpster diving, but we're doing it with Tamir. Okay. Let's get in there. Yeah. Look at that. Let's let's rip let's into. Let's open it. Hang on. Every time we open these up, I end up having to buy the kit. This one we won't, I promise you. Now you're in the books, mate. You don't have to do that every time now. <laughs> oh, thank God. It was costing me a fortune. What did you call this before? A single rooster. What does that mean? Yeah. Monocoque. Oh, monocoque. Of yeah. course, of course. There we go. <laughs> so there we have the updated chassis from the Hotshot series, I suppose. There's the open tray. Bottom loading battery. Bottom loader. There's nothing better than loading from the bottom. Isn't it? That... But it, we will have hotshot gearboxes that bolt on front and rear, right? And the propeller shaft. Shaft drive running down from there. Is it there? Oh, geez, it's high up, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I used to see them low in the modern stuff, but yeah. Yeah. There you go. Here we have, oh, oh look at the red plastics. I remember the bottom Didn't loading battery thing was a problem because sometimes you'd go over a jump and it would unload. Hit it and unload. Yeah. The old frog suffered that fate sometimes, yeah. didn't it? Here we go. Oh, that's my favourite, the pillow ball front end. Can have a look here. So they use a captured ball yeah. in the front suspension arm, hanging out of the steering block. Which a lot of people think, oh, that's a, that's a modern thing. But no, they were doing it ages ago. Ages ago. Yeah. And pretty easy. I mean, a good bit of engineering, but it's actually pretty simple for them to recreate it, isn't it? Yeah. Just doing the parts through. And the, and the red plastic, that's a classic <laughs> to me. Look at these re this rear hubs. Rear uprights are just wow. massive. Wow. I call that a roll center. That is that is very, that is a lot. It's fantastic. I love the red. Yeah. Very crisp. This is a, a harder. Oh, we've got the battery hold downs in the side yep. here. Nice red. In red. That would have been a first for that model. This would look so cool when it's built up. Don't fall in love with it. You can't no. fall in love with everything you open, mate. It's a, it's a trap. It's a trap. They get us every time. Yep. B part three, there's your, your wheel hexes that we talked about. So these are the three um, male parts that yep. lock into the wheel, the three points here, just with a standard sort of arrangement. On so you can, a lot of people do put hexes on them. You can, you can the fit 2.2s on. The purists don't really have go a, for that. Have a look at the width of that front bumper. Show I me. I mean, your normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a squidgy, a window squidgy. I mean, you, the, the cars nowadays, 
have that much. Don't they? Yeah. But back then, everyone's, oh, you've got to protect the front wheels. I don't and think now you couldn't get over a jump with something like that. No. Nah. I think that's going to be almost wider than the car. That's massive. Isn't it? Good squidgy. I remember the Hot Shot once had holes in it. Holes in it, did it? Yeah, well, probably you'd probably go along and cut that now, wouldn't you? I would. Make it look neo, yeah. neo yeah. vintage. Is that what you? Yeah. Know what you'd call it? Uh, these suspension arms, yeah. in my mind, look that's, different. That's classic. Uh, no, certainly these are, these the, are long. What long, part spot is it? This 1985. Uh, could, could in fact be a hot shot. Very hot shot. Yeah. A lot wider than I remember. I've only ever built one, but it was a couple of years this ago. This is now. 1985 too, and th these, this is a classic hot shot upper arm. Yeah. With the holes in it. Yeah, that's where that, that squish plate for the pillow ball goes. Well, there we go. Oh, here we go. Here's your battery flap. And these have got a little bit of flex, which is good. Your bottom loader. Yep. Look at that. It's even got an aerodynamic aid on there. Yeah, I'm I don't sure think, that's don't more think, of a design cue. Yeah, I don't think that was there originally. So but that would be sort of hinged and then a locking but, pin, I imagine. But asking me to remember 1985. <laughs> the 80s was a tough time for you, was it, TFG? Oh. Hey? Those tight shorts oh. and that big moustache. <sighs> hey, the big oh, old no. cookie duster. Yeah, but... And those beautiful red locks of yours. Strawberry blonde. Long, long, long gone. Really? Yeah. When's the last time you had a mullet? Did you have a mullet back then? No, I didn't. No, you didn't I go thought for that? Looked, I thought it looked pretty shocking even then. <laughs> Here you go. It hasn't changed. It's classic hot shot gearbox. Isn't it front and rear four wheel drive? These are dawned, oh, what, 20 different chassis? At least. It was, it so was really annoying. until the Manta Ray and the Top Force that they did away with them, yeah. isn't it? Or yeah, every four-wheel drive Tamiya from the inception, what, like 83 to 90? Had this basic transmission Didn't configuration. It? And, and it worked all right. It's a bit noisy. And my, Well, yeah. And you, you had me at these, this little slot here. We can zoom in here. Yeah. These little slots here were used for your yeah. pinion mesh. Yeah. You Where got, am I looking? Here. Here. Yeah. Move it back, there you go. There you go. So you'd put little it's steel plates and there. you'd go from like a 15 to a 17, for example. Yeah. And it, um, meant, and it meant you two. can't get it wrong. You can't and, get it wrong. Unless but you, you put in the wrong amount of plates for the pinion. Or you couldn't get it right because everything yeah. was worn. Yeah. But so, it, it's basically a, a good idea. Whereas now they just generally have the different screw locations, don't they? Yeah. From the MO chassis and just all that. move it all over. Some of the... Some of the cars is a dodge, what is it, the, the MFO1X, it's almost impossible to see the mesh of the thing. Is it? When you're doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at these. The infamous, I'm not going to even take these out. No. These are the super grippers. You're doing yeah. well to wear these out, aren't you? Yeah. Hey, these are considered the most all-terrain, all-terrain tyre I think there is. But I still bought a, a brand new set every race meeting. Did you? From Peter Orchard at Orchard's Hobbies, back in the day. Really? Yeah, because I thought it was important. I've seen you drive, mate. I don't think that would be important. I'm going to open the special box. The special box. Hey. Well, it's nice. That, uh, that wasn't a nine steps cutter. That one was not. It wasn't come to hand. Oh! No, look at those gears. Now, back in the day, yep. you used to boil them. Oh, really? To make them softer? I'm not why sure would why. would you boil them? Everyone. Oh, you've got to boil them. And it, that changes the... Well, it definitely makes them softer. You could... Even colour them, I bet. Yeah, used to boil, and yeah, if you were really keen, you'd um, you dye them as well with Rick, Rick colour dye. And I'll, if Jensen Spence is watching this, as he will be at some stage, you'll go, yeah, I remember that. He'll want to re-watch you doing something, won't he? Something yeah. valuable for the community well, at some point. If he if he needs to not off at one night, this will <laughs> normally. I remember there was a guy called Rod Brain at the Keeler Club who was his car was always super quiet, and they always said that he used to file each individual tooth. Really, now, file the tooth? Yeah, I don't see that that's going to help Pan it. I think it'll make it worse. Panda told me he used to when he did initial build on a to me a plastic gearbox, comical for example, yeah, or Wild Willie or whatnot. He would build the gearbox with toothpaste yeah. and run it in reverse for the first like two hours. So yeah. you build the car, put it together, pack the gear, well not pack it, but yeah, just lubricate it with toothpaste, run it in reverse um, for two hours. Because toothpaste is a mild abrasive. Yeah, and then he would totally strip the gearbox, clean it all up and reassemble it. Could you be bothered? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Neither could I. <laughs> CVAs. Hey, these have been yeah. around for a long time now. Yeah. Still, not usually still red, normally yellow. In fact, white. Mm. No? 
little comical ones are white. Yep. Here's our driver. What's his name? Pedro. Ah, uh, that's um, Hurry Up Harry, I think. Hurry Up Harry? I think I saw on the box. And no, got Harry, the, hurry up. That's right. And we got the old P's, P pipe strain. This has just been about an every Tamiya kit since the grasshopper. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's a, a different polymer, but it's the same servo, uh, servo yeah. saver. Z-Ben servo saver from the Hornet, Grasshopper, Frog, etc., etc. That's the giveaway with Tamiya kits. The uh, composition of the plastic is, yeah. de is dependent on what colour it is. That's right. That's right. And, and once you build a few, you get to know it. Like yeah. I said, the P parts tree. Look at that. Uh, a power of uh, mediocre power. Oh. The old Mabuchi motor. And uh, Panda told me he used to, he used to love building a Tamiya kit because he'd keep the rubber, Dunga. Mm -hmm. And he would then make a dyno out of it. He would use that to attach to another motor and he would spin it up and he could take the voltage yeah. from the, the, the donkey yeah. motor if you could. Yeah. And that would tell him how fast it was spinning. There you go. See? He's still giving, even though he's not That's right, all these little tidbits. Yeah. People will say that about us one day. Yeah, no. I don't think they will. <laughs> no. They'll try they and forget look, us. They look forward to the donut reviews. Yeah. Bevels, to me, oh, bevels. They, oh. have, they have not changed. And these hot metal. These pinions are the are softest material. Made alloy. Of, if you were to make them out of cheese, cheese. they'd actually be harder. Hey. They, yeah, you do just, definitely need to lube up these pinions and strip them and lube them every time you run them. They do yeah. have hard options available, but they're not 48 or 64 pitch. No, they're uh, AV pitch. AV pitch. So you need to make sure if you do a 48 pitch. Will work, and but it'll be it. very, very noisy. Mm. So you get a replacement AV pitch. Very important. And here we have the metal parts bags. Nothing too fancy in here. Oh. Got the squash plates. We got traditional big, dog bones. Big long steel ones though, so yeah, they should last a fair while. Or they depend. Plastic bushes. And I do advise if you are in fact going to build it and play with this kit. You just want to bite the bullet, spend the 30 odd bucks. bucks and put ball bearings in. Pull ball bearings. You just save it. yourself so much trouble. Because you've already saved at least $10 and not having to paint it. <laughs> at least. And here we have the old AG, the A strawberry jam. Strawberry jam. Strawberry Thread jam. Lock. Thread lock. Uh, what are these? Some radius arm? Are they radius arm? What's that? We're going to have to look at the instructions for that. Do you know that? Uh, is that the uh, prop shaft? No. Seen a prop shaft? Not. Could be. All right. We're, show, we're showing a lack of knowledge here, BT. Well. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm sure it comes as no surprise that there's a lack of knowledge going on. Yeah. Sticker sheet. It's very uh, 80s, isn't it? Not, still not pre-cut. Not pre-cut. No. Oh, he wants to. I, I enjoy cutting stickers. Is that sick of me? Yeah. I actually just sometimes buy a TTO kit. Just for the sticker sheet. Yeah. Just to so I can spend half an hour building the kit. And four hours cutting four out, hours cutting out, out stickers. stickers. <laughs> Never to be played with. Because you play with it and go, oh. <laughs> And for those of you who end up putting the stickers on and going, this one go over here. Get yourself a heat gun. A heat gun. A heat gun. Or a hair dryer. Hair dryer's a little mm. bit gentler. It is, but it doesn't sometimes cut it for me. So I use Jeez. a heat gun on the um, lower setting. Just waft it over a couple of times and waft it. It will. There's a, there's a word I didn't think would come out of your mouth today. Yeah, well, it's not my mouth that you should be worried about when it comes to wafting. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to stick with my thing that that is indeed a prop shaft because I'm looking at the outdrive. Yeah, you're there. probably very correct there, yeah. TFG. Oh, look, the old pinion spacer. Oh. They don't do that anymore, they just no. give you a measurement. Yeah. Oh. So, I'm just going to refer to. I can't remember what's the last kit I built with that. There's the sucker. So this little, so this is off the parts tree and you slip that over the, the shaft of the, the bush of mm. the motor. Um, and that gives you the spacing of the, this is back before hobbyists had calipers. Yeah. To measure such things. So they give you a little guide to put it in, butt it up. And if you're at the track done. and you change, oh, has anyone got a the pinion spacer? Ah, uh, there's the shims I was and talking the, about yeah, in the, the gearbox. There's the suckers just there. In the gearbox case. Yep. And that's how you move your, so the, you got the screw there and you got the shims either side. It's beautifully simple, but they're a bastard to get in. <laughs> and they move around and you swear at it a bit. Oh, oh the, old bevel, the old bevel diff. One of, one of life's great gifts. Apparently the hobby shops used to buy them in bulk. Yeah. And have them in a parts tray. And you just buy Different. bevels. Yeah. You go and buy bevels. 
those days are long gone, I'm afraid. This yeah. is a bit of engineering marvel. The old um, thrust, thrust bearing. bearing. No? Yep. That would have been a very expensive bit of kit to yeah. produce back then in the 80s. But obviously, they needed it to get the gears to stay together. What else have we got here? It's all very... It's all very run of the mill, isn't it? You, can, ne you, can, never, you can never call a Tamiya instruction manual run of the mill. They are the benchmark. Even for back then? Yeah. Even and for back then. I mean, these are absolute... Every other instruction manual needs to take lessons from these. Yeah. Now, this is the front end with the squash plates I was talking about. So, really cool, the pillow ball. So, you put on the, the steel plate, then the squash plate, then screw the ball through, and then you screw that to the arm. And these tiny little screws. Yeah. You need a tiny little screwdriver. Great fun. I don't know, I've, I've never used one enough to break one, but I'm tipping it's not the strongest part of the car. No. Because I imagine that they would bend and buckle and get, get loose. No, this little steel plate, once it's had a few knocks. Again, we're talking back too many years for me to remember. Oh, your driving's improved since then. Here oh. we go, it tells you how to put the radio in. Yep. Do that mid-build. Typical to me because <coughs> the servo becomes an integral <laughs> then, part of the build, doesn't it? Yep. Part of the chassis that you never want to see again. Yep. The shocks, uh, these were the, the CVAs, these would have been super fancy back in 1987. Yep. Oil-filled dampers. And they're still very similar in construction now. Like they're fundamentally, shocks haven't changed. The fashion of emulsion versus bladder comes yeah. and goes. But apart, oh, look at this. There it is. That's the prop shop. It's like a coat you, hanger. And they give you two. That's a worry, isn't it? That they give you two. Yeah. They must know that they're crap. <laughs> <laughs> no? I don't think it's a big dollar item. A bit of bent wire. Yeah, you try and get one for spares. Yeah. And that's the thing with these re-release cars. is They're really fantastic and, and great to do and great to work on. But when it comes to actually running them in spare parts, mm. yeah, it's... Bit hit and miss, but that can be part of the adventure, can't it? Scouring oh, the world oh, for a no, prop shaft. No, I just buy two kits. Buy two kits, yeah, if you're going to play with that's it. That's what I always do. Fantastic, guys. Well, that was. That's a, it's a, that's a fun little car. That was your and I first official unboxing. Important thing is the box art on a Tamiya car. The Best, box itself, the right? The box art on the drawings is just absolutely brilliant. As a uh, always professional illustrator, or, yeah. You know? That is beautiful, That's, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. How many artists did Tamiya have? Was it just one no, guy? No, they had a two or three. Did they? From what I know, I could be completely wrong. But Can was, you tell which one by looking no, at it? No. No, because they all work to a certain standard, but it's just absolutely brilliant. I look at that and go, I can't do that. Fantastic. I'm well, okay, but I'm not that good. I am Brett from Hearns. And that's Harry. Hurry up. Eddie? You're right. It is Harry. I Harry told up. you. Yeah, you thought I was talking shit. I, <laughs> and, I did. I and definitely did. And rightfully so. But in this instance, I wasn't because I checked Harry. before we did the there unboxing because I knew it'd have a funny name. Fantastic. Well, I'm Brett from Hearns. I'm Tony from Hearns. And thanks for watching us unbox the Tamir Super, Super Saber. Saber.